No, I don't want to do the stupid puzzle. Okay, everybody, listen up. Our creative director whipped up some sketches and we're gonna be making a game based on the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Now, about the kind of game we're gonna make. Let's do a racing game. How about an overhyped FPS? Well, that's all well and good, but today I present to you the box of game design. We're gonna pull names out of a box? Famous names, man, keep up. I don't care if we drop Pikmin and Halo from this, we're making the damn game. You're insane. Am I? <laughs> The Legend of Zelda and Devil May Cry. Sitting down to write about Darksiders is the toughest thing I've ever done for my show. Because it seems like everyone likes this game, or they're critical, but had fun, you know? And I know, I do have takes and hot takes, but I believe in the experience above all else. YouTube absolutely affects how I look at games because I'm recording and usually rushing where I can, and sometimes games don't respect your time, or they're annoying, and I try to brush it off and say, you know, maybe it's because I'm playing this like it's work. But then a game will surprise me and really get me into it, like Bioshock. Shock 2 did, and I think my experiential reviews and opinions aren't so invalid if that can happen. And I'm just some dude on the internet, like who even cares, right? So here's my shot at reviewing the Darksiders series. Yo, hit the track! Darksiders is a game where the most pissed offest guy ever conceived talks to a trio of fiery caves and goes to Earth because it's the post-apocalypse and everything's really serious. Because everyone's dead. But Angle and Devil fight over stuff, and because War has no friends except for this HR manager and a capitalist, he just kills wildly and with abandon. A lot of people compare the games to God of War, but I've never played, so I guess I wouldn't know. And the Devil May Cry comparison isn't some red herring, like ignoring the white hair and red cloak. Darksiders is a 3D hack and slash game, which it really should have pushed more, but then they fused about 30 billion puzzles onto the game, and now it's just a limping monstrosity. Combat is simple, it's like Devil May Cry, but instead of precise controls, sometimes highly complex combos and effective evasive maneuvers, it feels like Lego people People swinging Zweihanders around with one hand. What do those hitboxes look like? Who even cares? There's limited air combat, pretty average combos, some specialty moves, and even multiple weapons which feel pretty distinct. Actually, despite my general lack of respect for the combat, it's still my favorite part of the game. It's actually really cool slashing away and swapping for a big shockwave punch or a tornado of souls, even if some of the attacks are a little too familiar. However, combat, the fun part of the game, is plagued by some questionable design. Beating enemies within an inch of their life will let you execute them with a button. It's super cool, seriously, just watching these animations, it's clear they really wanted to convey bloody brutality befitting a guy named War. But you end up watching the animations so often from the sheer number of small enemies, repeated enemies, etc. that they really just start to waste time. They do give you a chunky invincibility period on them, however, so I ended up keeping swarms of near-dead enemies around me at all times to dodge attacks for free. If an extraneous spectacle is abused unrealistically to cheese encounter design, there's a problem. Blocking, countering, and dashing are all pretty good in different scenarios. Sometimes it felt like dash didn't provide the coverage or invincibility frames I thought it could, but I blame that on the absurdly large hitboxes at play and the tracking on enemy attacks. A lot of times, defensive play can be circumvented by abusing executions or by using abilities like the AoE sword strike that just decimate your enemies. It's clear they were trying to make a cool combat system, but it feels more like a bunch of working parts that total a B. You know what I mean? The core problem, I think, is encounter design, from swarms that get mass executed or crowd controlled away, to big dudes that take a more delicate approach, combat is barely ever problematically difficult, except in multi-part battles. See, the game has a tendency to kill you with attrition, a series of long fights into a final super stupid one, like multiples of the big tough guy you just barely killed. And then you remember, you have Devil Trigger! 
I mean chaos form. I held on to it in all situations, knowing that one of these stupid fights was gonna pop up or whenever a boss was kicking my ass. Then you flick a switch and mentally flatline for about 10 seconds, invalidating the difficulty as the developers intended? Like if I'm holding my super cool power up move because I know the game's gonna try to cheese me, and it really feels like that after the first few times it happens, there's a problem. Devil May Cry did power ups right. You could feel a lot stronger even with the short time limit but from Devil May Cry 3 onward, it never compromised gameplay and could be charged up fairly reliably. It was interwoven with gameplay. In Darksiders, you wait a dog's age, pop it to ignore gameplay, and boo boo! <laughs> a word on everything else. Combat is unfortunately a mere fraction of the game's runtime. Gonna go ahead and highlight that word. I think it's pretty funny that for a game about one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, one of the most commonly asked questions about this game is how to move fast. And they're not wrong. When you're not fighting or dungeoning, you're traversing the world at a mild jog, abusing dashes, platforming, swimming. The game has just enough of an environment to feel like a proper world. I'll give it that much at least. You get a horse about halfway through the game and it's kind of shocking how uncommon horse riding is in general. Yeah, it gets used a few times, but it's mostly there to get through areas that are just too big and empty to jog through. Aw, oh, fuck! You find treasure exploring the world or dungeons, war's big loot hunt. That's exactly what a huge hulking freak does. Scrounges for artifacts and hit points. At least there's some sidearms like the demon trumpet. <laughs> And the game can't stop screwing around with other genres that are supposed to be like little genre swap vignettes to spice up the gameplay, but end up outstaying their welcome. Early on, the game drops everything and turns into a Star Fox clone. It drags for seven minutes, and that's really not awful. But in the moment, it's like, seriously? We're still doing this? Then there's these long protracted gunning sections that take up a ton of time. You know, I don't know if the encounter design team got the memo, but war has a giant sword. It's as tall as a tree and thick as an ox. Get your stupid little gameplay vignettes together and knock it off. Competent action games don't need to break up their gameplay with temporary game mechanics because the core is supposed to be fun enough to carry you along. It's a valiant effort, honestly, but it's just unnecessary bloat. Add to the extremely silly tale of war that he was forced to go through a series of dungeons full of puzzles and treasures so he could rip the heart out of a series of demon chests. This game loves puzzles to death, and to be honest, I didn't expect just how many I'd have to complete. This game's a puzzle factory, some easy, most excruciating or long. Sometimes puzzle sections will last anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes before another combat section starts. I got stuck on a bunch of them and just wanted the game to be done every time. And most of the time, the answers were simple and I wasn't paying enough attention, but some of the time I just didn't know that I had the ability to do what the puzzle required. As for the Zelda comparison, I mean, finding keys to unlock doors, using items found in dungeons to complete certain objectives, Crawling layouts, and you want the Master Sword? Like in Legend of Zelda? Go collect the shards of the Master Sword! Like in Legend of Zelda. This game feels like it's directly lifting from Zelda sometimes. The good news is it's framed uniquely enough to escape criticism. I'm sorry, what's that? The Abyssal Chain? You mean a fucking hook shot? Also, there's bosses sometimes. They are bosses and they are in the game. I don't think any of them are worth mentioning specifically. Except this idiot who's like, Oh, did I leave my teleportation rune on my hammer so my enemy can do that and bring it behind my head just so he can jump on the platform and hit my one weak spot? Did I do that four times in a row? Duh! If you're a fan of puzzles and thinking things through, you're gonna love this game. I'm not gonna dunk on the puzzles when they're just not something I'm a fan of. Now let me drop a fat however. The biggest issue with this game, I think, is not one of gameplay. The gameplay is all fine. It's a B. It followed the instructions. But this is a game about a horseman of the apocalypse. I look like a square and my name is f***ing War. Why am I playing with puzzles and finding keys with this absolute mutant when I could be smearing heads on the floor like paste and ripping doors off their hinges like Ugh! I want to feel that anger. I want that rage. I want War to stop swimming in this stupid pretty lake and grab capitalist demon by the head and pop it like a grape. I want the game to have fun with itself. I want this story to be campy because this character, this world is so ridiculous 
ridiculous. But nobody's having fun in this world. Everything's so fucking serious all the time. And I know I've already put off a ton of people with this review. I had to sit down and genuinely ask myself after playing this game why it made me so mad. Why I hated it so much really. Because I've done Zelda, and I've done average action games, and I'm pretty sure I've done them together before. But this game brought out a frustration I couldn't place for a while. I think I have an answer. Everything in the game, from enemy NPC to your supposed allies, to you, the protagonist, is mean-spirited and miserable. And the few characters that aren't are victims of war's douchery. It reads like an angsty teen comic, which is fine and all. I get that Darksiders is a Western comic book concept, but it's so morbidly unpleasant. There's the angels. They'll try to kill you any chance they get. Demons? I mean, we already knew what we were up against. Companion character? Backstabs you. War or can't stop making snarky comments and trying super hard to look cool, but isn't having any fun while doing it. Like an actual edgelord. Oh hey, this giant guy was our ally for a bit and made us a gun to use, that's nice. Then Moore shoves the fucking gun back in his face for some reason so our once ally can scream, PULL THE fucking TRIGGER! And he's all like, heh, maybe next time. Just cease to exist, you stupid, lumpy, Prince Arthas-looking shitwit. This demon is clearly an extremely powerful bad guy, like mega evil level bad guy. And he says the only nice thing anyone in the game does to war, and it immediately follows him, telling you how he would kill you. Like, it's cool when war's beating on something that just spent five minutes trying to kill you, when war's getting revenge on someone who deserves it, and like I said, I want war to go crazy and scream and rage and be interesting, but when he's doing the most hardcore sh**, he's just standing there all dour. Real fun. At the end, all I can think is that Darksiders wanted to be cool, but came off actually edgy and uninteresting. And its gameplay feels like a watered-down Devil May Cry that lasts twice as long. And puzzles aren't doing it for me because War shouldn't be solving Rubik's Cubes. And they need to stop copying stuff from other games, like what even is Darksiders? What is Darksiders? What does it do even once? That's original. The horse sections? The portal gun puzzles? <sighs> I mean, Valve, are you just gonna lay down and take this? Can't you sue? Look at this! Look at this! Look at this! Oh, that was great! A new IP storms the market with THQ at the reins. I love the smell of money. Yeah, it's all right. Though I kind of wish we had done our own thing. A sequel would be easy money. Oh yes, but not just any sequel. An enhanced sequel. You see, we've already set the base. We just need a few touches. Homages, like the portal gun. Oh, that was a great idea. Yeah, that was a really original idea. Now, let's roll the bones. Prince of Persia. And... Too human, really? Ah, uh, I mean... We'll do what we can. So Darksiders 1 sold pretty well, and then this game happened. You know, it's funny, this game seems better in many ways on the surface, but realistically it just traded in some of the bloat from the last game for new stuff. Let's build up from the bottom. The game's visuals are a lot more striking, a lot more unapologetically attractive than Darksiders 1. The game doesn't take place on some post-apocalyptic Earth, but all these fantasy locations, they'll let the designers use color to craft a world that pops, that wears its heart on its sleeve. It fits way better for these weirdly proportioned mega beings to exist in a world as stylized as they are. The world is pretty big, but not exactly open world. It's not some big place that exists regardless of the player, right? It's all designed so death has something to explore for a few minutes in between objectives, sometimes full on mini dungeons and puzzles too. Darksiders 1 had a world that you could explore and fast travel between, and that's all here too. It's just that the world is more contiguous, not just a series of zones, and it feels like they made it that way so Death had a place to ride his horse, something that was super limited in the last game. Oh yeah, Death. The next horseman up to bat is the big man himself. At least he looks cool, like way less dude bro and way more slipknot. 
Oh no. Yes, it's true. Death is war, but worse somehow. I mean, bless you if you like it, but this guy goes around to every last NPC with the same snarking douchery, except unlike war, he's got something for everybody. It's fine for a while, but seriously. Oh, you're uglier than the other giants. Oh, my name is Karn, which I prefer, but other giants call me Pup. Er, I guess you're Pup now. Uh. Fucking shut up, you friendless goon. The game makes a point of that, some NPC straight up asks you who's friends with death, and the game implies all this stuff about him being corrupted and an outcast, but it's not like he tries to change people's minds or anything. I guess he comes off from start to finish like a character with room to improve, but snarks the whole game away and never grows an inch. It's just narratively disappointing, I guess. There's a lot of stuff going on in the Darksiders universe, like heaven and hell fighting, and magical objects doing stuff, and corruption or something, but man it has a way of losing you. Every time these characters start talking, I feel like an 80-year-old watching Pokemon for the first time. So confused and disinterested. Death has a lot of stuff to do, so the gameplay loop is pretty similar to the last game. Travel to a dungeon, do the puzzles, unlock the doors, kill the boss, start over. But if you put this game and the first side by side, you'd swear they were different franchises. I mean, look at this guy in combat, weepy ghoul f jumping around with his irresponsible dash that sends you flying away, not being able to block for some reason, swinging with pure visceral motion, extreme attack mobility, and man look, the animations are good, really cool, but when there's a lot of enemies it's hard to tell what's going on, you know? It feels like before, but more mobility, and infinitely more chaotic. Speaking of which, you have chaos form again, you use it when the game dumps silly fights on you, again, still haven't figured how to weave it into gameplay seamlessly, okay. Okay. Look, if you're gonna have a power-up just for the sake of having a power-up, well, cool, this game's more interested in its new RPG elements anyway. Like, the combat's totally got depth and interesting options, I'm not gonna pretend it's extremely shallow. It's just not elegant, finely crafted like the masters of the genre is all. And maybe I shouldn't expect too much anyway. So what are the RPG mechanics and how do they impact combat? I compared this game to Too Human for a reason. I was gonna say Diablo, but I wanted a game that had unnecessary loot and a weak skill tree, and if that ain't Too Human. You level up, spend skill points, and builds your own semi-unique player character. So build paths are cool, but hey, this one has a teleport attack, so I'm on that side, no questions. But again, combat is loose. There's a weird necromancer build path. My teleport doesn't seem to grant invincibility frames, which is offset by the teleport healing on impact with an enemy. Like this shit is bonkers, man. I'm glad because it means it's not taking itself super seriously, mechanically speaking, and it's kind of fun to mess around with. But all told, it makes the game feel less deep than it could be, less worthy of time investment. You know what? It feels like a game for gamers. Something to suck back and not bother with the hardest difficulties because you know it's just gonna come down to the numbers and health potions spam at the end of the day. They put a loot system in the game which maybe like two people asked for and have enemies drop stuff, have loot boxes you can buy with in-game gold, but still... Come on, man. They put actual treasure in chests, so finding them isn't totally disappointing like it could be in the last game. The system's fine, it works, but like I've said, it feels unnecessary, adds more bloat to an action game that doesn't need it, and solves a problem with exploration that, again, doesn't need to exist. That problem being needing to justify exploration. Without it, there'd be no real reason to dig around or venture off the beaten path. In the last game, it didn't matter because you had three weapons, could upgrade regardless of chests, and nothing really to lose except extra cool armor. Chests were an addition. In this game, chests have things that you can use some of the time, even full armor sets, and it's way more worth your time. But in the end, it's only for stats, nothing more. The game's still under 20 hours long, you're still cycling through your gear fairly rapidly. It's just a padding system. I don't mind if a game is a concise experience as long as it satisfies. I hate it when a game is unfocused and never gets the nut. I don't really feel the need to talk about enemies, but I wish the game were less chaotic overall to look at. The dodge system works pretty well on its own, and while some attacks look like they shouldn't hit you, hitboxes are wild in this game, and there's not much you can do about it. Spam health potions, I guess, I don't know. Darksiders is sloppy, but it never matters. You're packing health potions, the teleport move heals, and don't even get me started on gear. Status ailments and other bullshit nobody asked for impact combat, and dumb it down too. Here you can see me wailing on this shield enemy like a dumbass. I'm clearly not engaging with the combat mechanics 
mechanics like I'm supposed to, so you'd expect some kind of punishment, but no. I have ice gauntlets and the guy freezes over after enough hits, ending the fight. And this happens all the time. It's pretty unfortunate letting your encounter design crumble to the ten or so ways the player has to disrespect game mechanics. The dungeons are exactly what you'd expect, except instead of extremely complex or long form puzzles, they just make stuff take forever a lot of the time. I can't even tell you how many times I tried to make this bomb jumping thing work, and just before I gave up, it worked immediately, and in the same room, you need to use bombs for a bunch of different things, so you run to put the bomb up high where you can use it later, run back and pick up a bomb, put it on the ball, blow it up, walk down the hallway, do the combat, oops, you put the bomb in the wrong spot, drop down, run back and get a bomb, run back, it's f tedious. They're constantly shoving new puzzle solving abilities into your hands and every time I'm just like no 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 Thanks. Even when they're fun, it takes a bit to get the hang of, and I had to look up a fair number of solutions for this game too. They're not all bad, but it reminds me of the first game with how much screwing around you have to do. There was a puzzle late in the game that involved splitting into two and making your other self catch a bomb. I didn't even realize you could do that. I don't remember the game telling me, but looking back, it seems so obvious, so intuitive. I guess what I'm saying is the game makes me feel dumb and I'm insecure about it. <laughs> the boss fights are exactly what you'd expect. Combat with gimmicks, for the most part. It's so hard to remember any of them in detail, uh, except the demon himbo from the last game. Fighting him was cool. I distinctly remember getting to the final boss and thinking, wait, who the f*** are you? Oh yeah, he's the guy from the, uh, <laughs> opening story vignette, but to keep up with all the nouns this game's dropping, you have to sit and pay attention to all these dreary fucking schmucks droning about their stupid, inconsequential, immortal being problems. God, that's like listening to me. Don't listen to dreary people. Like, who cares? Pick up a football. And before the final section, the game sends you back to Earth for one last drawn-out, no-holds-barred, nail-biting, eye-twitching, button-mashing, trigger-spamming, mother hump be some bitching dom dom fucking gun section! Stop! Stop! Platforming makes up a lot of dungeon traversal, and as soon as I turned the game on, I knew it looked familiar. Look, I'm sorry. God forbid a developer puts platforming in their game. Shut up, K-Bash. But given the track record this game has with <coughs> homages to popular games, Death's platforming challenges and uh, wall running ability look so familiar, it's embarrassing. Given it's fun enough when it works, but, and I hope it's not just me, I always had problems getting the dude to run exactly where I wanted him to, or he'd get caught jumping up when I was trying to hit sideways. Maybe a port issue. I don't know. You cannot escape the darkness in your heart, death, that fragile sea. The men betray. In your very soul, and through it, when we all face our deaths, all that will be left is a heart. This guy can still smell. Darksiders 2 isn't awful. I started with the good stuff because something about the series has value, is worth exploring, but I'm absolutely convinced they don't know how to upsell their own best qualities and downplay the worst. If I played this and saw Darksiders, 3, I wouldn't have bought the game. Sales for this game were pretty awful. Too much competition with Dark Souls for Windows and Guild Wars 2, I guess. But if you can't bring anything new to the table except for a setting, which I don't even want to call that new, why would anybody pick up your game? That's right, move it out, move it all out. I mean, I thought Darksiders was pretty fun. Maybe this works. Ooh, maybe it works. A game design box? I don't know, uh, Pac-Man, uh, Kirby, uh, Elder Scrolls. I don't know, Chief, these are pretty good. Fool! We don't need fate. We don't even need ideas. Our game will be the Dark Souls of Darksiders. <laughs> Darksiders 3 is a very straightforward experience. It knows what it wants to be, it's extremely flagrant about the elements it's copying from Dark Souls, and the average Darksiders fan felt betrayed by the game, it seems. I mean, open up any review of the game from release, and oof, it's rough out there. Glad I played the patched version, to be honest. THQ went under, and THQ Nordic acquired the license. It may have been an affiliate studio, but it's still a different team, you know? So given the circumstances, they had a chance to reboot the series any way they wanted. Here's what we got. 
I get it. I know it's a meme. I know a couple bros who get real mad about Dark Souls comparison, but hey, stop me if this sounds familiar. Hard to kill enemies, a fragile protagonist, a reliance on avoiding damage with the invincibility frames of a dodge, a reusable healing item that refreshes sometimes, safe points that you can teleport between, strong bosses that require pattern recognition to beat, collecting souls from dead enemies to spend on level ups, upgrading weapons and armor which is more impactful than actual level ups? I hope I don't have to waste any more time I'm explaining this because Darksiders 3 is straight copying. However, unlike the infinite other times the developers have copied things, this time it feels mostly right. And though it doesn't necessarily fit the series, I feel like it's because we've shifted from Colossus to Skirmisher. Fury is a totally different take on the series, and someone I'm actually happy about. My initial impression was, oh good, I get to play the shitty horse person. But they made all of that part of the game's progression arc. Fury gets summoned by the fiery cave triplets, wars tied up, and Jesus Christ, they're gonna start dumping exposition. Fury, you have been summoned to destroy the seven devils. Alas, though he was weaker than the other horse, and we have the same human must take up the responsibilities of the horse. Ugh, mistress, I will accompany you on your quest. Fury, surely you know we are being set up. Something is not right with the world. Shut the f*** up. Oh, jeez, what a... Bitch in character shuts all that tedious monotone crap down in a second. Fury 2020. Fury 2024. Fury forever! And Fury actually develops over the course of the game. The entire game removes all that stupid confrontational posturing garbage from the last games. The world's a lot nicer. The makers, the human survivors. Fury herself goes from trying to be mean to I will fight so the humans can live. And for an action game to make me care about a character's arc, that's a first, or at least something I haven't experienced for a long time. So Fury's arc starts at level 1. She's weaker than her siblings, and growing her power in a Souls-like game really makes it feel like she powers up. It pays off so hard narratively, in gameplay, even in cutscene, she goes from angry snarker to confident fighter. It's so good. I remember hearing someone call this game ugly, and I guess we bought different games. I played through the entire thing, commenting how this or that section looked so damn good. Fury is small and has to interact with the environment in ways that fit her character. She climbs through these small spaces, she swings from bars with her whip, she blazes upwards, floats over chasms, controlling this character, and especially later in the game, feels so satisfying. The world is pretty well interconnected too, it's like the last games, where you'd have to go back to different parts of the world with newly acquired powers to solve some sections, not uncommon in gaming, but it feels more naturalistically intertwined. Now the one major issue with the world, though I guess it's a problem with the core, is random FPS drops. Sometimes the performance is just garbage, and I think that's fairly inexcusable in 2019. Like, the game looks good, but I take unfinished textures over FPS drops. People complained about crashes too, but I got a single crash in all three games, so I'd say performance issues are consistent among the most up-to-date versions of series installments. Because it's a Souls-like game, you're forced to pay attention to the gameplay, which might seem kind of obvious, but I found myself falling asleep in one, and zoning out in the sequel. In this game, stop paying attention attention and you'll be dead in a blink. I get that narratively it kinda sucks at a basic level. Fury's one of the horse people, she should be crushingly powerful, but her weakness is pretty well integrated into the overall experience and I think it helped me enjoy the game a whole lot more. I love the combat in Souls Likes, getting combat right, becoming competent feels like a level up in real life, you know? Fury gets a series of weapons to use which is super fun, and there's only like four special weapons in the whip so the developers could design around whatever weapons you might have at a given time. I think it leads to a pretty sharply designed experience. However, combat does have a few issues. I know people are probably gonna be like, oh yeah, the dodge is bad and enemy attacks track too much. But I don't think that's the case. That's one of the most common complaints I read, but in my experience, dodging comes down to good timing. And if we're being serious, you can offset how hard dodging is by upgrading equipment, literally increasing the invincibility window if you really need it. No, I think the issue is something I've been calling false flag conditioning, which is not the term that most clearly matches what I'm trying to communicate, but sounds neat. <laughs> See, the problem with dodging some enemy attacks is that most don't have tells, but they're dodgeable, or you can just, you know, crowd control a room with your whip and don't need to bother with dodging. However, certain devastating attacks have a tell, a little glow to show the player you need to dodge. That's even more fair than Dark Souls, at least at first glance. The game is throwing up a false flag, however. It's most noticeable with this enemy here. Several of his attacks produce a glow, but they all have different swing speeds, meaning this warning isn't equal among attacks. 
attacks. That's crazy bad design, if you ask me. It means you'll be told to dodge and either be rewarded for a quick reaction against the quick attack, or punished for a quick reaction by the much slower attack with significant tracking. This doesn't come up very often, at least not noticeably, but here it really bogged me down for enough time to notice it. Outside of this issue, I think combat's great, barring that some weapons are outright superior to others. Now this is a Darksiders game, so you have to expect dungeons and puzzles and they're there, except dungeons are just environments and puzzles are mostly short and tolerable. I really appreciated the devs for chilling out with that shit because my pea brain can't handle more than two small puzzles in a row. I just, I start to melt down and get angry. Notably, the bosses are harder and therefore infinitely more memorable than the previous entries. And I mean, come on, it's the seven deadly sins. Some would call it creatively bankrupt, but I'll just say that ship sailed in the first game. I think the bosses are mostly really good. Getting into the pattern of dodging and punishing with a strong counter hit, chunking their HP away feels great. You can run into trouble with some of the dumber fights. I hated fighting Avarice because I kept getting smacked with what I perceived to be unreactable attacks in melee range. And I realized during the fight that bosses don't rewards you with souls. That's a really gross oversight, I think. You should be generously rewarded for killing stuff as difficult as souls-like bosses, if anything to highlight the milestone. I genuinely thought the gluttony fight was bullshit, but like any souls game, you figure it out and get by, you know? Though I dislike the Simon Says design of run to avoid the puke rain, dodge repeatedly or take 99% of your HP, etc. There's all kinds of ways to offset difficulty, right? This is a Darksiders game. You have health shards you can buy, you have your Estus flask, you have a magic bar to do cool spells depending on your currently equipped power, and of course... <laughs> The Havoc form power-up is just like past games, except it kills the FPS and does less damage. I use it the same way, it builds up so slowly you rarely have it. I wish they'd fix that, but there are, again, ways to circumvent this issue through upgrading and items. I know people were disappointed by the loss of RPG skills, but that's the cost of a consistent experience. Resident Evil 4 wouldn't be better if you could teleport and summon allies occasionally. It'd be a cluster f you can still control Fury's growth and focus on a couple of weapons over the others. It's not necessarily flashy and chaotic and an absolute power trip like Darksiders 2, but it feels fairly skillful and fun. Now, spoiler warning, Darksiders 3 ends, despite the warmer and more welcoming world, with a betrayal. Go figure, the Watcher, like the one that betrayed war, it does that. and takes all the sweet, sweet power you've been earning throughout the game. And it turns out she's the final deadly sin. There isn't much more significance to this, it's just another boss fight. But the ending can change depending on your actions in game, specifically if you started the side quest to get the good ending. You just have to find this demon by going out of your way, close to the end of the game, thrash him, then talk to the big ugly dude who gives you the weapons, and make him ascend to the mortal plane or something. The prompt to even make a choice stopped me in my tracks because these games have a pretty fixed narrative all the way through. Either way, it's pretty fitting that not doing the extra content gets you the short end, and doing the side quest gets you a fairly lengthy end where you get to see strife and a vision of spooky characters hinting at new events in the universe. I'm just grateful that the game attempts to reward players, I guess. Now, I've said both good and bad things about this game, and that's the issue. People hated this game, but here it is, my favorite. <laughs> People loved the first and second. I couldn't stand them. I'd say it's not personal, but it probably is. The stuff I reacted badly to in the old games comes from my own taste in gameplay and my own taste in narrative. And Darksiders 3 is the same, but if you made me choose which game was the most rewarding, I'd say Darksiders 3 every time. It's the game that wants to tell a story, to make you play through a natural arc, the game that wants you to grow in power alongside Fury and seal all the sins, instead of roaming from uninspired dump to uninspired dump, ripping off demon wings and acting like a douche. I don't think the story's contents are any smarter, I just think it's better written by a mile. And oh god, this game must have disappointed so many series veterans. Like, I don't blame those guys at all. You keep your snide, angry men and try to have fun with Darksiders Genesis, god bless. The root problem with the Darksiders series is again, one of identity. Where does the main series of games go from here? I can say what I want, but it's pretty obvious you're gonna disappoint fans when you make a series that looks like one thing and then swap it out for something else but give it the same name. Thank God Genesis is just a spin-off, otherwise this series would probably have alienated every last fan left. What really remains to be seen is if the developers can do something unique to justify Darksiders' existence. Now I'm gonna go make a bagel or something. You guys have fun in the comments, uh, I won't see you there because I don't want to feel like garbage today, so uh, see y'all next time when I learn how to end videos.